joint panel has more to offer, but first let's remind you just who they are. Adel Iskander is a specialist in Middle East issues at Georgetown University in Washington. Janice Stein, director of the Monk School of Global Affairs in Toronto. Marie Joelle Sahar, professor of political science at the University of Montreal. And Neil MacDonald, our senior Washington correspondent. All right, in the time remaining, our final big question. Are we in for a new world order? I have my reservations about how you're feeling, given your earlier answers, but let's, Marie Joel, let's... Uh... Not really. The Middle East might be rejoining the rest of the world in terms of certain dynamics, but this is not, at least not yet, a game changer. I think I hear an echo from Neil. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if suddenly uh, democracies erupted with constitutions and independent judiciaries and law enforcement, uh, you know, uh, tools that would enforce the, those things? Uh, I think you can probably, you'd lose a lot of money betting that that's going to happen. Uh, it's just, uh, and you know something, if that was the case, we wouldn't be afraid of the, of the Muslim Brotherhood. They wouldn't matter. But the reason that we are afraid of the Muslim Brotherhood dominating and taking over a government is precisely because it's not likely to happen, that we'll have constitutional democracies erupt any time soon. Adel, give us a reason to hope here. Um, I'm going to be the optimist here and say that I think it is a new world order in some sense because if you look at the new generation of people who are watching this story uh, the youth they are really quite captivated and mesmerized by what the Egyptians are doing um, I'm hearing from all over the world I mean be basically people are watching this and going wow this is you know the story of V for Vendetta and the Matrix you know these are popular cultural icons you know who are literally taking the challenge against a tyrannical authoritarian regime and the story is incredibly universal it can be grafted in any circumstance now that doesn't mean that all of this all of these chips have to fall simultaneously or even in a short time period but we can begin to see youth becoming empowered enough to want to challenge various forms of authority worldwide not just in the Arab world I think this is a crucial moment and people are watching Egypt and to see for the time again say people who are fighting and dying and being hurt in their pursuit for democracy it's a wonderful thing to see I think you just have to be a little bit skeptical. Okay, well, two compelling arguments. Where are you, sir? I, I, it's not the aim of a new world order because the Middle East itself can never make a new world order. Um, it's not where, it's not in the heartland of the old powers, and it's not in the heartland of the new rising powers, Peter, which are in Asia. But it is a really significant moment in the history of the Middle East, and uh, the fact that young people. Um, who are going into the streets not in the name of religion, uh, but essentially in the name of rights and political change. It's hard to remember a moment in the modern Middle East where this happened. All right, I have one minute left, which means one sentence from each of you. Looking into the next two weeks, what's the one thing you're going to be looking for that will signal to us where this is going? Adel. Um, the, how the regime in Egypt responds to the mounting pressure and whether or not the pressure actually subsides. So this is the turning point, I think. Travis. Watching whether we really get a process going, um, uh, constitutional change, uh, is really serious. Are they serious about letting political parties organize? Is there, real, is there something here, or is this just rhetoric again? Long sentence. Marie Joanne. The balance of forces uh, between opposition and old regime components in the new structures in Egypt. Whether yeah. the Arab street has come to understand the power of peaceful protest as opposed to armed struggle. All right. Listen, I thank you all for giving us uh, a lot of smart talk, a lot of things to think about. We're always eager to uh, hear what you have to say on topics like tonight's. Please don't hesitate to share your thoughts. You can reach us at cbc.ca slash the national. More still to come on the national, including this. The polygamous community of Bountiful, B.C. is no stranger to controversy. <laughs>